if I just use this dress as an example, for you as a user, it's usually enough if you apply clothing as you used to and then go find the pose that you want your character to be in. Let's try some of the roller girl poses, some of the standing poses. I'll show you both the standing poses and the sitting poses in a moment. This one is for the regular Genesis figure. These are for the Jada character. We'll just use the regular Genesis figure and apply that pose to the character. There. This already looks fairly nice because most items of clothing are both conforming as well as deforce capable. So you can see that it's almost there already, but I suppose for a standing pose like that, we probably want the skirt to fall and the arms, depending on what the material is, to kind of settle so that we avoid things like this. So let's see what this looks like just with the default parameters. So once again, knowing that this is a Deforce outfit, if you don't, you can always have a look at the clothing item in question. Have a look at the surfaces tab. And this dress only has one material zone and it has indeed the simulation options here applied. So that means it's a Deforce clothing item and you can simulate it. If that isn't there, your item, either hair or item of clothing is not Deforce compatible. So knowing it is Deforce, also, the title often gives it away, so that's the, that's the other good thing. And with the default uh, settings, your current frame, I'll just go and click Simulate. You see that the figure is going back into the A pose, and that's another setting I will show you in a moment. You can enable or disable that. Often it is desirable to let it do that because the A pose is specifically designed, like the T pose, for clothing to kind of fit without intersecting with one another. There's pros and cons to this uh, approach. Sometimes the figure moves, and it's really nice to start from an A pose and move the figure into the pose that you need and let deforce frame by frame kind of sort out what you need to do there. So we can see that just with the default values, the skirt is, is properly draped, the arms are properly draped. There's also no poke through. That's the other cool thing that Deforce magically fixes, usually. Uh, that doesn't mean you, you don't always need to have adjustments, but it's a really nice way of avoiding poke through altogether. So one thing that I really like about Deforce is the fact that clothing creators don't have to put a gazillion figure morphs into their clothing to make sure it follows properly if you're dialing in a particular figure morph. But as custom characters have exploded over the last years, that is no longer a usable approach really because you can't, as a clothing creator, make your outfit and then go and put 4,000 custom figure morphs in there. It's just, it's just impossible. You can maybe use a few base figures to get the user started, but there's always one or one variation that isn't in there. So that's where Deforce really comes in handy. So what I showed you there, if I go and clear this, it goes back to this. And what I showed you here, when I simulate, it starts from the A pose. And that's a setting in Deforce that says start from the memorized pose. We don't have to use that. And uh, there's pros and cons to it. Sometimes I have a pose that's in a position that I'm happy with and I don't want it to move from here to there. I just want it to settle. I basically just want the clothing item that is now in a slightly wonky position just fall down and, you know, just fall and settle. Let me show you how to do that. So we'll go and clear this. Uh, that is up here on the simulation settings uh, tab again. And that is under the first one, initialization. Uh, this one here. When I hover, the, the name is a bit too long. Start bones from memorized pole. So if I go and switch that off and then simulate, then my figure doesn't go into the A pose first and the item just settles as it is. Sometimes this looks better, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, often you might also find that 30 frames is just not enough. I've already showed you how to make that longer. If you have a feeling that, especially when moving from one pose to another, 30 frames isn't enough, or you need longer, you can increase that. That's under duration. Uh, current frame is this, so just that frame. We've looked at the animated play range already. You can also use custom if you ever wanted to do that. Then you can type in your, your own preferred simulation range without doing anything to the timeline. So sometimes when you've got your timeline set to something that you want to use as part of an animation, you say, yeah, I can't really reutilize that at the same time for the default simulation. You can always go and override that here. So if I go and put 60 here now, and then clear and then simulate, then what would happen is that default is now going to take twice as long to make the dress settle.